Welcome to Healthy University, where we'll discuss issues and subjects on how you can live a healthier and more productive life. And now, here's your host for Healthy University, Alan Eisenberg. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Healthy University. This is your host, Alan Eisenberg, and I'm so happy to be here today to talk about something that I realized I hadn't talked about before after all the other subjects. We never talk, I never talked about defining a bully, and I have a special guest today that I think can help do that and also talk about a lot of issues around bullying survivors and how we feel about the definitions of bullying and what it really means to us. So uh, I'm happy to introduce my guest, who is Dr. Fran White. She is a wife first of 50 years. I just celebrated my 25th, so I'm halfway there, and a mother of, adult, of an adult son and daughter and a grandmother of nine angels that the Lord blessed her with. Nine, that's amazing. That's a lot of gifts every year, I'm sure. And provided her with inspiration to counsel and write. For over four decades, she has been a member of the helping profession as a psychologist, marriage and family therapist, and author of three books, also a blog, and media publications. Most of all, Fran is a survivor, not a victim, of bullies, as I like to say as well in her journey in life. And so I think we'll have a great conversation. Welcome, Dr. White. Oh, thank you so much, Alan, for inviting me and providing me with an opportunity to share with your listeners my voice on my passionate quest to change the behavior of these bullies as we will define them. Well, it's so, it's so interesting because we're, we're all out there, and I think a lot of us are, are individuals trying to make a difference and you know, one of the things I love is when I meet an individual or find an individual like yourself who is doing things and is sort of in that same world of like just we're doing it, but we can connect. And and I really love the idea of connecting these worlds that we're in because we all have something to offer. And I think as we talk, we'll find that out. But I really, again, getting back to that theme of defining a bully, I thought I'd start by, by saying what stopbullying.gov says the definition of a bully is. And they say it's an imbalance of power. Kids who bully use their power, such as physical strength, access to embarrassing information or popularity, to control or harm others. Power imbalances can change over time and in different situations, even if they involve the same people. It's also repetition. Bullying behavior happens more than once, or to have the potential to happen more than once. And bullying includes actions such as making threats, spreading rumors, attacking someone physically or verbally, and excluding someone from a group on purpose. And what I think is really important in that definition when I think of myself as a survivor is the imbalance of power. And that's one of the things that's really interesting to me because when there's an imbalance of power, you can't bring those two forces together and make them shake hands and make up or mediate because it's an imbalance, you know, only two equal. So what do you define the term bully, and how do you see that? Wow, Alan, we must have been uh, researching from the (laughs) same data. However, I have a few little pieces that I've added to the pie. Um, Basically, and I'm going to stress this at the very beginning, we're not talking about the mean kid on the playground that kicks somebody in the knee. We're also talking about adults. Adults are bullies, too. Uh, Political leaders are bullies. (laughs) International people, leaders are also bullies. So we're talking about... What are you talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about. Political leaders, really? (laughs) Come on. Who? Who are you talking about? Go ahead. (laughs) No, go. I'm just being funny. Oh, okay. (laughs) Because all you have to do is read the newspaper. (laughs) But needless to say, um, my notes here in terms of the definition of a bully is that, indeed, you did repeat this. They're people who harm, who humiliate others, generally smaller, weaker, younger, or more vulnerable than they are. They're not going to dare pick on someone that symbolizes strength and power. Uh, They deliberately, and as you mentioned, repeatedly attempt to cause harm to others. Um, One key point that you didn't make is that bullies are not born. They're not genetically programmed. 
uh, victims, they, they were victims themselves. In, in essence, what I've researched, they were also picked on and, and hurt by others who were perhaps in authority. So in essence, parents may have hurt these bullies, mm -hmm. and they're displacing their rage and their angers on others. Bullies beget bullies. It's a quotation I, I stumbled upon. Yeah. They lack empathy. They're incapable of understanding the feelings and anxieties of others. Because if they really had compassion, they would not be so abusive. Uh, child bullies uh, continue, as I said, bullies beget bullies. Their progressive behaviors go on into adulthood, unless by some miracle, somebody uh, senses what they're doing and they get intervention, clinical intervention immediately. But most bullies don't and they go on to be adult bullies. And these adult bullies become spousal abusers, you know, the husband or the wife who beats up on their spouse. Uh, their offspring suffer as they're moving on in life. And co-workers, believe it mm -hmm. or not, mm -hmm. maybe you have had the experiences even my, in my own clinical world. Yeah, there are bullies in that world who do displace their power and their anger on co-workers. Statistically, 74%, and don't coy away, of bullies are males. 200,000 children worldwide are their victims, and bullies in general suffer from low self-esteem mm -hmm. and depression. And lastly, they exhibit difficulties in managing their rage and anger. In essence, they can become murderers. Yeah. So bullies are very dangerous folks to be around. Well, as you know, as you were saying, and, and the term that I like to use is that hurt people hurt people. Yeah, so even even victims of bullying can go on if there's an imbalance of power in their world to to want to bully. Uh, oh, although yeah. most victims have uh, an empathy uh, feeling in them. I, yeah, I, I realized I was a victim because I'm a highly sensitive person, yeah. uh, which is an empathic uh, quality, oh, and yeah. and that's great. You know, it's a great quality to have. But it's a very difficult quality to live with. <laughs> so, so you, you find out quickly, you know, at some point in your life that this is what's causing, you know, what I, I, when I had to look back and go, why was I bullied? Why was I chosen? And certainly it was my reactions. It was, you know, so, so not to take personal play, it doesn't forgive the bully, but it says, okay, what, what was different about me? And it's that I, I'm not the male who's into sports, who, who's into all this. I'm really into feelings. And, like, when I'm around people, I feel things. Like, I feel very strongly and ha have a very good, have always had a very good intuition. And then I discovered something really recently, which is that animals notice these things. So I've oh, always had... Oh, ever? <laughs> yeah, I've always right had, now, like... I have my Siamese cat yeah. eating on my leg, knowing yeah. that his master is a little tense. <laughs> but I've always yeah, animals are instinctive. It's a phenomenal. Yeah, I've phenomenal. always had that. I had it with a a dolphin once. You know, like mm -hmm. went to Sea World in the dolphin pool, and all the kids have their hands in the water and my hands in the water. And this dolphin comes up, turns on its belly, and lets me rub it for oh, a few minutes, oh, and then goes off. Very brilliant mammals. And then I had a, I had a wolf. Yeah. We went in. We went in with wolves once. You know, mm -hmm. a bunch of us, like six. And this one wolf started rubbing really hard on my face. And the, the wolf keeper was like, oh, it's scenting you. It's scenting you. I'm like, oh what, my God. <laughs> what's it doing? I have no idea. And it was, it was saying, this is my friend, you know, to every other oh, wolf. Wow. It was scenting me with its scent to say, don't do any harm to this because, yeah. you know, this is my, this is my friend. Well, and they, it, did, they knew you wouldn't harm them exactly. on any level because you could never, ever qualify to be a bully. So bless that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I, I feel lucky. And then what you were saying about bullies, I mean, the other statistic that's out there is that serial bullies, people that don't get past bullying, mm -hmm. you know, 60% of them are going to end up with a criminal record. 40% oh, yes. are going to end up with two. That destroys a life. That's it. I mean, you're not going to get a good job. You're not going to get uh, a lot of things, and you're probably going to be in that system because that's what it is. Is most people who go to jail end up repeating, uh, 
Well, and, they learn more techniques and strategies of right. bullying, and they are bullied in the penal system. But so therefore, it just becomes worse. <laughs> right. But, but certainly, the workplace has now gotten a lot of eyeballs. And it's because, you know, if we don't stop it at the playground, it's just going to continue. If it worked for me and I got through life with it, I'm going to continue doing it. And as you said, bullies have low self-esteem. It's really funny. There's a study and it shows, you know, here's the, here's the survivors of bullying, because I know we both like to say survivors, and their personality traits, and here's the bullies. And there's really only a couple differentiators. One of them is empathy, like you said, and one of them is uh, the imbalance of power, strength. Or, oh, yeah. You know. But that's it. The, in terms of low self-esteem, low self-worth, depression, anxiety... The, the, they they have the same feelings, and typically, like you said, that comes from either abuse at home or ignoring at home. Which you have to be, learn it somewhere. Right. It's not something you come into this world with. Right, really. right. So it's it's interesting, and I think we both, yeah, like you said, we, we're both drinking from the same <laughs> <laughs> cup, cup of Kool-Aid. But we have the same mechanisms internally to be intuitive, and yeah. that's what counts. And, and the important thing is that these are the facts. I mean, these are the scientific facts, too. You know, I, I, when I started doing this 10 years ago, the science was sort of beginning, you know, but, but even the news hadn't kind of picked up on it. But I, I had said, you know, I was, let's see, 10 years ago. So I was 39 years old, and I said, you know what? I am still to this day affected by the bullying that happened to me. And I'm not just going to sit still. And now that there's the world of the Internet, I can speak that. Oh, yeah. And what's amazing... One of, one of the things I was going to talk about in our later discussion is my own personal experiences at the hands of bullyism. And indeed, you know, those are things we remember forever. <laughs> yeah, and and that's the that's the thing is that people people don't forget. People yeah. people may repress. Um, you know, I, I went through many years of repressing, like not really realizing that's what it was, mm -hmm. uh, and that's why I, when I wrote my book, A Ladder in the Dark, that's what I did is I dug a hole and repressed these memories, right? And but they weren't really gone. They were always there. And it affected your emotional development oh. and your performance in life. Totally. And yeah. yet you didn't recognize what it was that made you do the things you did or thought, think the things you did. But it was there. <laughs> yeah. And on, the, on that note, you know, we both, I wrote my book and I just finished a, a nonfiction book about the extreme actions uh, that people take when bullied, such as suicide or school oh, violence. God. Oh, yeah. um, which are terrible, and I just read another story today that just break it breaks my heart every time I read them. Um, but what you wrote a book called N Nikki's Nice Bully. Nikki Nice's uh, bully. Oh, yes, Nikki I Nice's did. bully. Yeah. So yeah, so, yeah, what, I did. That was your your first book in the Nikki Nice children series, I guess that, that you worked. That was on. the first. Well, no, it wasn't my first book. Okay. That was my second book, and I have a series called Nikki Nice and. That's the first book in the series, and I did write that book really um, and dedicated it to my granddaughter, Nicole, because the book is named Nikki. <laughs> and, you know, she shared a lot of uh, war stories about school and the kids at school. It certainly triggered my own memories of my own bullying. And there is a personal side to that particular story, rather recent. Um, this precious grandchild was um, sexually assaulted, <laughs> and perverts are bullies, people who um, rape are bullies to the extreme, pedophiles are bullies, and unfortunately she encountered that kind of an experience, and um, she and her mom left the state they were living in and came to live near us, and her first week we enrolled her in camp, I, I, hate, I hesitate to name the camp, mm -hmm. but the first week in camp she's in the pool in her bathing suit, and a group of young boys came up to her and tried to make some sexual advances. Well, <laughs> she's running away from the bullying in one state, and she finds it in another. And, you know, those boys, I presume, were disciplined by this camp. And, you know, there's got to be a lot more to uh, the awareness of this kind of behavior. And the book was also written because of my patients that I see who shared um, lots of, again, war stories about uh, 
their bullying experiences, which precipitated emotional problems and mm -hmm. failures, and all the things we read about uh, as far as side effects of bullying. And lastly, one of the reasons also that I wrote this book is that adult patients shared with me lots of their own stories in the workplace. And I'm not going to hold up a banner about, oh, sexual abuse of women in the work setting. Well, indeed, it is true, certainly mm -hmm. revealed by patients. And it is, I believe, we can call that bullying as well. Yeah. And so needless to say, all of these stories, um, even though the book I wrote, Nikki Nice's Bully, is based on a child's experience of bullying, it can be replicated and interpreted in the life of an adult as well. And uh, yeah. that's pretty much what motivated me to write that book. Yeah, and, and what, what I kind of like as to what's going on, at least, in the world of study today is that we've, we've finally given it a name, which is complex PTSD, which is what I knew I had. Oh, I, yes. I do train, I do training and many times my training is for the military. I'm here in Washington, mm -hmm. DC. So I, and oh, I was yeah. doing PTSD, I was developing PTSD training and I'm like, geez, you know, I feel like I have PTSD. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I did. You know? You've encapsulated the primary symptom right. of the victim of abuse. And so, and, and so in the definition, it's not just bullying, but it's any child abuse, it's any mm -hmm. adult even, you know, the spousal abuse, familial abuse. I talked to one yeah. gentleman who, you know, it was the family, it was his brother and mother who were abusing him, who were bullying him. And, you know, that, that's really, we don't even think about those things, but... It but it's violence. It's emotional yeah. and physical and sexual violence the weapon that really harms the victim, but the victim can be a survivor. Right. As you say, PSGD, therapy, there's all forms of it. I'm a cognitive behavioral therapist. I believe behavior can be changed. Yeah. And therefore, there's hope for these survivors. Oh, the yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, hope, I hope that I'm somewhat of a, an example of getting past it, and then trying to make a difference. <laughs> it's like, oh, God, it sounds like it completely. Like, you've taken you know, something bad and made something good out of it yeah. by reaching out to those that need help. Because because it, it felt alone to me. It felt, you know, I think because anyone who speaks of it, that's the yeah. problem. Yeah, and that you is... You have to speak out loudly to the world and define who this is, what this is, and how to make it better. Right, and that there there is... A term there is a you, as you know as a therapist you, and a psychologist there are after effects from the action of bullying or abuse that people need help with and that we can't be hiding and one of the things I talk about so it's interesting you talked if you don't mind me sharing a little sure. bit about what I feel about you know rape or, or particularly like campus rape or some of these Right. And, and bullying is I see I see it both both of those issues I find to be victim blaming in many cases. Oh, yeah. People make the mistake of using victim blaming. So like yeah, they in, blame the victim yeah, for like, what happened to them and the victim suffers from guilt, shame, and ultimately anger turned right. into which yeah. is suicide. We we all know you watch a court case on rape and that and the questions yeah. the, the the lawyer's going to ask what were you wearing how much did you have to drink <laughs> exactly. you know did you flirt exactly. with him did you you know and and it's the same for a, a bullying victim well you know where did you not stick up for yourself were you crying you know it, it, mm -hmm. well, well, why I, did you let it happen yeah, well, what can you <laughs> have done differently not to be bullied it's like, exactly it's like That's you exactly. can't change people and yeah. I always say that I'm always like really. And and it was even in the movie Bully, so I always say it's. It, oh, it, I must say that movie. It, I it, have to. Yeah, it. it boggles the mind because it happened to me in 1978. It happened to me mm -hmm. where you know I was seeing. They made me see the counselor because I was being bullied, and mm -hmm. the counselor wanted the name of my bully, and I didn't want to give it because I'd already been burned by adults, and he forced it out of me. And I said, "Well, don't don't say anything." And yeah, an hour later, I'm called into the office. And there's the bully in him, and they're smiling. You know, this is how I remember it, of course, as a, as yeah. a survivor. And they're smiling and talking, and, you know, the counselor says, well, I, I called Mikey in, and, and Mikey said it was a misunderstanding that you guys are, are friends. 
Uh, so shake hands and, and just, you know, let bygones be bygones. They so, didn't want to deal with your pain. Yeah. It was too hard. What? They didn't understand or have the knowledge involved in that whole process. I have to just add one more thing. The day after my granddaughter was, I guess you call it, sexually bullied in that pool, that particular camp did not suspend these kids, and they turned to her and called her snitch, mm. you know, and all of these other things. So you get payback when you do reveal the incident. Yeah, and, and, and <laughs> even more so, it becomes... Your something you did, and, and oh yeah, and I'm so responsible. You, Absolutely, what, what, it's my fault. <laughs> yeah, what killed what killed me watching the movie Bully? So in 2013, in 1978, this happened to me, and this was the philosophy of a counselor in a school of how to solve a bullying problem. And then untrained counselor. Yeah, in 2013. <laughs> well, in 2013, I'm watching this movie Bully, and. Lo and behold, you know, these people know they're on film. I mean, I'm like, they're being filmed, so I'm thinking they're at their best behavior. They're going to be doing the best they can. And this administrator sees this one kid, you know, two kids scuffling outside, calls them in, you know, won't listen to the witness, won't listen to the bystanders, shoes him away, then tells them to shake hands. The bully puts out his hand real stiff, and the victim won't take it. And then she, oh she admonishes the, vi- the victim, and... She makes him feel bad, then she sends the bully away, and then she just keeps going. I, I expected more from you, you know, to, the, to this kid. And oh, it just, I just thought he's going to go home well, and that's kill himself. bullying the victim again. Right. <laughs> right. And so then how, how can you convince a victim to, mm-hmm. to come forward? Anyway, I want, I want to talk about your blog, and then we have to take a quick break. But then I want to get into your story, too. I sure. Wanna, I want to find out more. So I know you write a blog and you help people on uh, blog.franwhiteauthor.com. Right. Well, it's many subjects, but right. primarily I've written about uh, bullying, and I'm not going to take up our, blog, our time to go over every particular article, but I'll just give a brief overview by giving you a title or a topic. Uh, I wrote Bullies, Who Are You?, which is what we discussed detail here. Victims of bullies whose lives are destroyed. Bullies and how they affect lives. Intervention against bullies. Cyber bullies. Another painful assault. I also wrote about bullies on the playground. Here's a key title. Mother's Day. A revelation of female bullies in the family. Yes, Mm -hmm. women are bullies Mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another one is watch out the monster in the playground. Yeah, there are bullies out there and administer Administrators and teachers should keep an eye on them and not say, oh, stop tattling. Uh, Another title is the adult bully. You know, again, I'm emphasizing it's not just children. And, of course, I think you had published one of my uh, blogs, Mm -hmm. I think. I think it was understa- the pain of bullyism and how to understand it and so forth. Yeah, I get a great deal of satisfaction. And again, it's almost like a journal, a diary you get out. And I know you blog as well, getting out all of that in your mind and in your soul and sharing it with other people. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you, you and I probably both know, you know, or, or find that writing is, <laughs> is cathartic. For me, you know, for me, writing and... And I tell everybody this, by the way, you're getting, you're giving me a free therapy session right now. Cause I, I tell everybody that this, this podcast of mine is my therapy. You know, this is what I do. I love, yeah, I, I love yeah. talk therapy, and I love talking. For me, it's it's a way to cathartically discuss the subject. Well, with your basic intuitism, right. you certainly were destined to be in that position, and the bullies carved you as an expert into this role. <laughs> Yeah, they it's, did good. <laughs> yeah, I want to say you know, good good can come out of bad. And, oh yeah, lemons and, out of lemonade, or lemonade out of lemons. And you know, one of the things I've learned over the course of my time um, in in doing this work or in getting better is to learn to find good in every day. You know, gratitude oh, journaling God. or reading positive affirmations or just you remembering. Read, yeah, I used to call read, myself. Read, read, read book because uh, she recommended a gratitude journal yeah. which we all should keep well and and i, I love Brene brown there's there's some just great people out there good, yeah, yeah great people out there and and mm-hmm. of course i'm a huge self studier so when i needed to get better i read everything under the sun and yeah. you know they tell you they tell you basically three things probably the same thing you tell every patient 
If you want to get well, better... one thing I'm telling you, and you've done it, is knowledge is power. Right. If you don't have the knowledge, you don't have the power to yeah. change things. But, but I always say there's, you know, there's, there's these critical things that you have to do. For me, it was, you know, a 180 change in life. Sometimes when my wife wonders who she married, but oh, that's, that's okay. But 25 years yeah. later. <laughs> she ain't going anywhere right now, as far as I know. No, and you'll have another 25 and yeah. celebrate your goal. But, um, but I say you, you've got to eat right, you know, because oh, God, your yeah. brain is fed by the food that you put in your body. And yeah. you, re mm -hmm. you really start to realize that. Like for me, when I was down, I started having a lot of stomach problems, which is very common because you're in fight, flight, or freeze. And one of the things is you have that sympathetic nerve that runs to your stomach because if you have to fi fight or flight, you can't be hungry. So it tightens your stomach up real nice and tight. And that's I, I had like a permanency of that for six months. Lost lost a good amount of weight, so it was fun. Wow. Um, so I say you gotta you gotta work on your nutrition. You have to exercise or get out. You've got to do some form of exercise. And you know I've got people who I know who you know are disabled. Oh, I can't exercise. I'm like, what are you talking about? Are your arms work? You know what works? You know there's exercise. Well, for Alan, everyone. I can give you one good piece of advice, and I have been there, done it. Stress does kill the body. Oh, yeah. You've got to reduce your stress because stress affects your, your uh, immune system. And one key point, cancer looms in the background. Because mm -hmm. the minute your immune system, you know, falls apart because of stress, it enters into your body. <clears throat> and I'm a three-time cancer survivor. Oh. <laughs> so been there, done it, know yeah. all about stress, and I continue to fight that battle with you know, maintaining calmness and serenity. Yeah, well, they say, I mean, my, my father is, is battling cancer right now, and he battled it before, and he keeps a very positive attitude. And I have another friend who's quite religious and very positive. Yeah. And it's the same thing. They, they, it's almost was, was miracles when they, they mm -hmm. had their cures because I think their strength of believing they could be better and their positive thoughts yeah. really do... They're victims, not they're survivors, not right. victims. And that's what I like too. I love that yeah. saying. So on that oh, note, God, on that yeah. note, I won't continue. Let's take a quick break. Absolutely. But when we come back, let's let's really sure. delve into your and my uh, probably sure. your story a little Absolutely. more than mine because everyone's probably sick of hearing <laughs> my story. Um, and and I've really enjoyed this, Doctor White. So just hold on a second, audience, sure. and Absolutely. we'll be we'll be right back with more healthy okay. you. Hi, and welcome back to Healthy You. This is your host, Alan Eisenberg, and I'm here with Dr. Fran White, uh, and we're talking about the definitions of bullying and how we both experienced bullying. So when we when we left, we said we'd, we'd kind of start hitting on you, Fran, and, and, and how you've, your story and how you found uh, a way through bullying. Yes, yes. I, um, I, too, as you are, Alan, and I'm sure... Probably 50% of the population, the people who may be listening to us, have also experienced bullying in their lives. Um, yes, I've written and we've discussed the blogs that we have uh, kind of used as our therapeutic intervention to pour our experiences into and share with others so they get mutual support. I also wrote a book, and it's called Family Secrets, A Journey of Good and Evil. And it was my very first book. It's a pseudo-autobiography, because the names are changed to protect the innocent. And I did describe various incidents of my own bullying, vicious bullying, by certain family members uh, due to something called family secrets um, in my background. And this placed upon me, uh, I was adopted, and uh, 
a lot of issues went into what happened to me as a bully, uh, and I'm no longer a victim, I'm a survivor, and that's why I wrote the book. And I'm not going to go on to describe the details in this podcast, but I do recommend reading it. It, it really touches on being abused, bullied, talks about childhood abandonment, and also the theme of the book is racism. Mm. So you can kind of get the gist of it. And also, as far as personalized experiences with bullying, I know, Alan, you mentioned what provoked you into your profession and into helping others is school experiences. I'm a heck of a lot older than you are, and to this day, I can visualize the bullies when I was about eight or nine years old. I can even now visualize their faces. I can hear their words. Mm -hmm. And that's how profound bullying truly is. So yes, again, I'm a survivor. I have thrown off that pain and found a way to get around it. And finally, uh, in terms of growing up and becoming a surviving adult, yeah, the work setting. I think we had mentioned that earlier. Uh, all of us have jobs. Every job setting has a bully, whether it be the administrator, the CEO, or colleagues. There's always someone that has to flex their muscle and make you feel small and also abused on some level. And one of the things when I talk about strategies in intervening this problem, yeah, you got to talk to somebody about it in the workplace. And very often, you know, you're shamed into thinking, oh, I'm a victim, I, I really shouldn't share this, I'm going to be made fun of. Um, so that's basically my personal, um, you know, world of bullying and how I did survive and come out of it yeah. as a victim. It, it's to funny, yeah, yeah, it's funny you say that, I, I talk a lot about, like, even in my workplace, like, there should be a therapist and a, a coach at every workplace, you know, oh, God. for people. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because yeah, we, we I I do work that's under the HIPAA HIPAA requirement. Of course, as a coach, I I keep the HIPAA requirement as well. But right. but it's like wouldn't wouldn't it be nice if people had someone that they really trust? Because HR people are great, but they're not necessarily trained to listen and in in therapeutic techniques or coaching techniques to help people move right. forward and. I, I always just kind of think, wouldn't it be cool if that was offered, you know, as, as a yeah. benefit versus... Or somebody, somebody in charge who had the guts and the power to pass on that experience, that report. Um, and I'm skipping ahead, but one of the suggestions I have with people who are working right now and feel like they're being bullied, document it, go write it in a journal, the date, the time, the person... And this is therapeutic. I always advocate journals on any emotional mm -hmm. issue you're fighting through. But <laughs> this could be used in litigation if oh, it ever yeah. came down to that. I'm sure that it was used, as we've read in the media, with the Fox Channel and all those women who ran a w up to the uh, you know administrators and proven their point and litigated. Yeah. So, yeah, that's one tool that one should use. Well, and people should know that you know, any company worth its salt is telling all their managers to do the same thing. Oh, yeah. You know, so document, document, document. Mm -hmm. Even if it was a verbal conversation, you're supposed to document. And yeah. you know, if, know. If, if you're if you're the employee and you didn't do the same thing, um, you're you're on the the losing end of that because it's the written it's the written information that you pass that oh, yeah. comes up in litigation, which. Unfortunately, in, in the world of work, it tends to head towards litigation versus uh, other forms of... Amenable, um, how shall I put it, counseling. Yeah. <laughs> Coming to a term. You know, because Coming it's in the resolution. business... Yeah, we, we all have to remember, you know, it's always in the business's best interest to not spend a lot of money. Yeah, that's not well, what the their goal is. of the business. Yeah. So what? So you brought up, you know, suggestions in preventing and diminishing. What, what right. have you found in your work? What, what's, what works? Well, first of all, what I would suggest um, as far as preventing this dysfunctional behavior from being uh, encouraged or continuing, my key term, and I've shared it with you, is knowledge is power. People don't recognize the fact that, you know, I'm not advocating Googling, but that's my second brain. 
there's information out there. There's, and you have to kind of beware of who the provider of the information is, but scrutinize. But read up on the topic. Get statistics. Uh, get stories. As, you know, eat it all up. Have all of this relevant information at your disposal to give you a better understanding because we started off by defining what the heck is a bully. Mm -hmm. You'd know that if you really got in depth in the, the, the legal or the um, academic definition of it and also what they do. And the public should be most aware of this. Parents, God bless them, they should also be more in tune to reading, researching, understanding. And last but not least, and you and I talked about this, Alan, school administrators, yeah. they need to be most knowledgeable about bullies because that's the playground, that's the place, that's the bully center of, of, of control of people that are younger and less able than they are. And 70% of children suffer from the effects of bullies, and that is a primary motive for prevention. And hence, as far as uh, matters of prevention, bully prevention programs should be introduced and utilized in all schools because they, they need a tool because many of these administrators in their graduate programs really don't get into this topic. Yeah. And it's, it's just not interesting enough. Uh, suicide is a factor in the loss of 50% of those young victims of bullying. Yeah. Mental health services must be provided to all who suffer from depression, mental illness, especially victims of bullies. That will hopefully prevent the horror of death. And there are so many media reports on lives that have been lost due to a lack of mental health intervention. And 160,000 children stay home from school due to bullies. Yep. Truant officers need to be trained to investigate this factor in school absence and report it to the school counselors and I guess the administrators as well, but most of all for mental health services to be provided to the family as well as the children. Yeah. And, and just to clarify, that's not yeah. a year, that's a day. 160,000 yeah. yeah. a day. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's an epidemic. Yeah. Our country has an epidemic of bullyism, and we've got to do something about it. And we just touched on this, the workplace environment, making it a safe place for employees to report or discuss a bullying incident. Adults are bullies, as I said earlier, as well as children. Yep. And the interventions need to be the same. And I'd like to just plug this. Victims should be allowed to acknowledge that bullying, bullies, bullying is unacceptable. And they have the right to report and to end this abuse, they should be, they have the right to dignity and right. respect. You know, not, not yeah. put down and minimized and, and made fun of, again, by another kind of bully. Right. And, and the other thing that I just came back from a conference, and it's finally getting talked about, and it's the thing we know, which is that schools only have so much time, right? And there's all these people out there who... Um, do anti-bullying programs or, or Alice, which is a famous yeah. anti-bullying program, which, which they're, right. they're all good things. They're all about bullying prevention, right? How do we prevent bullying from happening in the schools? Yeah, that's the key prevention well, before we have uh, victims who can't yeah. provide. Well, I have to say that if we go back to the definition, a bully's goal is to separate you from everybody else. So where are they going to do that? You know, is it the bathroom, the corner of the school that you can't see? You know, exactly. bullying doesn't happen publicly that a lot of people see. That was why it was so surprising uh, to a lot of people that I grew up. I felt alone, and so did they, uh, because bullies separate you. That's part of the tactic. So schools and, and even work and communities need to have a holistic approach. It's not only anti-bullying, but it's bullying recovery, which is what I'm talking about. So you have to do both. You have to have people that can help the people who are going to be survivors of the yeah. bullying and the exactly. bullies, by the way, because as we've said, you know, the bullies aren't immune. They're just they're yeah. disturbed people. 
Right. We should maybe pity them. But one point I like to make in terms of feeling alone and isolated and the bullies, you know, Mecca is to find a, a private place. I, my last blog that I just wrote a few days ago had to do with sexual abuse of children and pedophiles. And one of the things that is absent are parents who, of course, have the knowledge, but awareness. They're watching. Adults need to watch, not be in their offices buried in their files when kids out in the hall are being victimized. You have to get out there and watch and look and parents as well. You know, be aware if your child is a victim of bullying or anything else. Yeah. You know, keep your eyes open. And I know we don't... My, go ahead. Oh, I know we don't have enough time, but I, I've right. said if, if, if schools, if teachers took emotional attendance like they took regular attendance and said, you know... <laughs> that is a great point. Yeah, Johnny yes. is, isn't talking. His grades are dropping. These things are happening. Yes. You know, it's, it's not that hard to detect when someone is going through a hard time. You know, not as many masks as we, we wear, and I talk about wearing masks, you can't mask everything. And, yeah. you know, an A student turning into a D or an F student is a mm -hmm. sign of a problem. Or eyes that are swollen from tears yeah. after they come back from lunch. I mean, it doesn't take a neurosurgeon or a psychologist to look at a child or an adult and see that they're under stress. Yeah. Really. Well, and, and, you know, I was just reading a big article today about, you know, when you have depression, how you you feel sleepy all the time. So kids falling asleep at school you know, is another yeah. thing. It's like, it's not because they stayed up late sometimes. Yeah. Or insomnia causes yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. The, rumina the rumination stress. with insomnia. So as, as a therapist... Um, what other ways are there to heal? What other things can we do to find healing? Well, <laughs> I guess I'm going to reveal uh, my religious beliefs, but I think certainly prayer is primary. And second of all, I really must end on this note, family love and support as well as friends and therapists are primary support systems in the healing of the wounds from bullying, or any any situation in life. It's love, love mm -hmm. and religion. And I think those yeah. two things are the cure-all, the end-all of any problem in life. Yeah, and find, I, I always say, find empath empathic people. people oh, that, God, yes. People yes. that have an understanding you know of there what... there are charlatans out there uh, who are in it for the money. Yeah. And don't plenty have of them. Skills. Really, right, know. but but like you know, I I'm not saying well, you know, you should come to me, but <laughs> but I, I'm an I'm an empathic person. I'm a person that if yeah. you're having a hard time, yeah. you know, I I love Brene Brown's thing about sympathy and empathy and the difference. I've seen and, her on Oprah. So no, brilliant, I, yeah, and yeah. and you know, she just says with an empathic person, they don't say that they. Uh, are going to try, hey, let's go out and do something. Let's do this because, you know, if you're feeling depressed, you, you just can't. You know, they just put their arm around you and they say, I, I, I don't know what I can say to you, but just know I'm here. You know, just know you can yeah. talk to me. Just and that's, that gesture you just described, somebody yeah. putting their arm around you, nonverbal language that feels so good. We yeah. all feel good with a hug. <laughs> really? and, and honestly, you I know, mean, the other thing that people have to remember, and you brought up familial issues, yeah. you know, family is much bigger than blood. Like, I have a friend that I've had since I was 16 years old. He lives six houses down from me. Wow. He, he We went to college <laughs> together. We grew up, we've grown our, up with our kids together, you know, everything. And he is you my brother. He is my brother. You know, he is, at this point, yeah. after, after... 30 years, you know, he's, he's my, he's blood to me. And oh, Alan, that sounds so beautiful. You're yeah. so blessed. If you really. get one person like that in your life, I know you're you so lucky. You don't need to be blood related. Yeah. It's just a relationship that really evolves. I have, a, I have a great story. I'll, I'll kind of close my part with this. Sure. But, uh, so when, when our kids were growing up and when they were really little, um, they went to a after school program together. And, mm -hmm. and so, his little girl was calling my my little boy at the time uh, cousin. You know, this is my cousin, and and she, you know, the teacher was like, "Oh, I didn't know you guys were related." And she looked at the teacher, 
because we had told him this. And she goes, oh, he's my non-biological cousin. Oh, wow. <laughs> she sounds so brilliant. Well, she is. <laughs> she's she's very smart. She's about to, to head into college, and she's going to oh, go wherever incredible. she wants. Oh, that's incredible. Wow. But, but it was so funny oh, because Oh, you've done a great yeah. job with your life, starting <laughs> as a victim and ending up as a survivor yeah. and a helping person. Well, I really and, and admire you. Look, I, well, I, I feel the same way. It's like when you find <laughs> when you find like minded people, and you're doing therapy, yeah, and I'm doing coaching, yeah, and yeah, and, I, and I say coaching is that people. yeah, coaching is that extension after therapy. So uh, you know, mm-hmm. a therapist gets gets you to your present, gets you out of yeah. your past, right? And then yeah. the coach. Well, I might, hope that your oh, people who are hearing your podcast do gain much information because knowledge is power. Yeah. And certainly, um, you know, they can reach me through, I have a website, um, and it's uh, franwhiteauthor.com, that's all. And they can come to my website and read about my books and about me and also connect to my blog on the same website. Yeah, and, and I hope you'll uh, do more blogs with me or share more I blogs with me. I would love it. It's such fun to yeah. write, isn't it? <laughs> and, and it's fun to share. I, I was, I was telling you that. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, fun when... Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Alan, for having me as a guest on your podcast. And as I told you before, my very first. Yeah. And you've introduced me to a new world. Well, <laughs> well I, hope, I hope you enjoyed it. And I do. I, I require all of my guests to answer one last question. Oh, God, so, what is it? So you're going to get it. It wasn't on the list. Um, when you think about it, what changes have you made to live a happier and healthier life now? Gosh, I think my one goal in life long, long ago was to help people. And I'm getting a gut sense that maybe there are a few people out there who have heard my voice and that maybe my voice has touched their heart. That's really the one experience <laughs> I had for this past hour. And Great. also I've learned more about myself by talking to you. Great. Well, that's yeah. That's uh, what that, that's how I did. I didn't mean for it to just be about this hour, but that's very nice. And oh, you know, I and I think I think that's here. great. You know what? As I said, is you know, talk is therapy to me, and you do learn. You you oh, you yeah. know when you when I I found out you know when I told people when I went through a depression point mm-hmm. that I was depressed. You know, I wasn't going to hide it, and I'm yeah. just not that. You they're like ever. They're like me too. What are you on? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, my yeah. uncle, my uncle who I've known for a very long time, like yeah, I'm, I've been on something for years, and I'm like, why don't you guys tell me this? So because, because we, of course, you you know and I know that there's heredity involved in mental illness sometimes. Oh God, and, is and, there ever? I have a number of yeah. family members that are in that category. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. thank you, thank you for being on the show, well, Doctor. Well, Alan, Fran thank White. you so much, and maybe our paths will meet again. Well, I hope so, and certainly, <laughs> okay. um, thank you. I'll look forward to it. Okay. Okay. Thank bye you. Bye so this bye is bye bye. Okay. So this is Alan Eisenberg with Healthy You. Please join us next time. Thank you for listening to Healthy University, brought to you by Bullying Recovery LLC. This podcast does not replace the need for medical advice, professional diagnosis, opinion, treatment, or services to you or any other individual. The information provided here or through linkages to other sites is not a substitute for medical or professional care, and you should not use the information in place of a visit, call, consultation, or the advice of your physician or other health care provider. Join us next time for more Healthy University.